Okay, here are solutions to perfect problem four for math 60. Um, we're given two different linear equations here that we're asked to solve. So the first one, four minus two x minus three plus x equals two x minus 11. Um, when you're trying to solve linear equations, I mean, basically what you wanna do is add and subtract things to both sides of the equation to kind of move pieces around. Um, but it's hard to do when you have parentheses, they kind of get in the way. So what I like to do is first get rid of the parentheses. To get rid of these parentheses right here, I take the negative two and distribute them into the parentheses. Four minus two x plus six plus x equals two x minus 11. I took this negative two right here and multiplied it by x, that gave me negative two x. I took the negative two and multiplied it by the negative three and that gave me positive six. At this point, you have a couple options. You could start adding and subtracting things to both sides. However, rather than do that, I'd like to combine like terms first so that I have less steps to do. This negative 2x and this positive x is the same as negative 1x. You combine this guy and this guy. And the positive 4 and the positive 6 gives you positive 10. So really what I have is negative x plus 10 equals 2x minus 11. So what I like to do is do all this chapter one simplification before I do any chapter two stuff. It's chapter two where you start solving these linear equations by adding and subtracting things to both sides of the equation. Um, what I would like to, well, you have some options. I think I'm gonna add X to both sides of the equation here. We could have also subtracted two X from both sides of the equation, but I like to keep things positive if I can. So by adding x to both sides, these x's go away. So on the left, I'm left with only a 10. Um, plus 2x plus one more x, I got 3x. And now I want to end up with the x's all by itself, so I have to get rid of these. this minus 11 there. The way you can get rid of a minus 11 is by adding 11 to both sides of the equation. On the right side, the negative 11 and the positive 11 cancel out. On the left side, 10 plus 11 equals 21. And so now if you divide both sides of the equation by three, you get x is the same as 21 thirds. In other words, x is equal to seven. Um, and then it says we can check our answer by plugging it back into the original equation. So maybe I'll do that down here. Let's check. If I took four minus two times seven minus three. Instead of writing x, I wrote a seven. And then added seven for that x. What I want to check is, is, it, is that the same as two times seven minus 11? Well, let's see, over here I could get rid of the parentheses, or I could deal work inside the parentheses first. Seven minus three is four. Um, two times four is eight. So what I have over here is four minus eight plus seven. On this side, two times seven is 14. So I have 14 minus 11. Um, and to see if they're the same, let's see, eight plus seven is 15. Nope, that's not true. Four plus seven is 11. Minus eight gives you positive three. 14 minus 11, that also gives you positive three. Looks like this does check. X equals seven, we did everything perfectly. Part B, we want to kind of repeat that. Part B, hopefully we'll get the same answer. Now, unfortunately, we'll have to deal with fractions. Um, no parentheses or like terms to combine in this case, so we just kind of start by adding and subtracting things to both sides of the equation. Again, in order to keep my x's positive, I'm going to subtract 1 3rd x from both sides of the equation. What that leaves me on the right hand side is just the negative 4 thirds, because these x terms cancel out. But on the left side, I have to figure out what's 1 half minus 1 third, and that'll be the coefficient on the x term. Well, 1 half is 3 sixths, 1 third is 2 sixths. So 3 sixths minus 2 sixths, I'm left with just 1 sixth. Takes me here. Now what I want to do is get rid of this negative 5 halves. The way I can do that is adding 5 halves to both sides of the equation. Unfortunately, well, on the left side it makes it easy. 
things just cancel out and we're left with 1 sixth x. Unfortunately, on the right side, we don't have common denominators again. So when we add these up, 6 again is our least common denominator. So this is negative 8 sixths. This is positive 15 sixths. So negative 8 sixths and 15 sixths. If you add those together, you get 7 sixths. Um, so now if I want to get x all by itself, I can multiply both sides of the equation by 6. So 7 sixths times 6. And since this 6 is 6 over 1, the 6's cancel out, and I'm left with just 7 for my final answer. And much like I did in part A, I can check this answer. Um, I could take my original equation, so maybe check. I have 1 half times, and instead of times x, it's 2 times 7. And from that, I want to subtract 5 halves. And the question is, is that the same as 1 third times x, which is 7, minus 4 thirds? Well, 7 is 7 over 1, so if I do 1 half times 7 over 1, what I'm left with is 7 over 2. Similarly, this 7 is 7 over 1. 1 third times 7 over 1 is 7 over 3. So what I got to do is subtract these fractions, 7 halves minus 5 halves. Fortunately, I have a common denominator here. 7 minus 5 is just 2, so I get 2 halves. And on this side, I also have a common denominator. 7 minus 4 is 3. So I get 3 halves. And sure enough, these are equal. 1 over here and 1 over here. Looks like it does check out. Looks like I got the right answer. So I am done with this problem.